Hi everyone, it's Nicolas Dorier. Um, so today I will present to you how to install your own instance of BTC Pay server uh, without a hassle. So I already did a video la last time about how to set up this kind of architecture with Bitcoin Core uh, and Explorer, BTC Pay and Postgre. Uh, the, the, the problem is that it's still a bit difficult to set up properly and also it's not adapted for a uh, production environments. So I decided to make it more easy by creating a Docker Compose uh, for production environments. And by doing so, I said, okay, why not pushing that further and having like a cloud provider like Microsoft Azure uh, to host it in one click. So just to show you what the production environments. Uh, it's kind of, it's kind of uh, fancy in a way that you have the same you have the same Bitcoin Core and Explorer, BTC Pay and Postgre, okay, encapsulated into one Docker Compose. But you also have like a reverse proxy uh, that shields the application server uh, that, that that is inside your your your, your Docker. So basically, uh, all the WooCommerce e-commerce plugin that you might have download for BTC Pay will talk indirectly to BTC Pay through the uh, Nginx floor, uh, to the through the Nginx uh, reverse proxy. And one thing is that is very important as well is that for in in uh, in the, in production, do you basically need to. Uh, use HTTPS for all your communication to be secure. Uh, so for this reason, I'm using uh, Let's Encrypt and uh, two container inside my Docker Compose that will that will just uh, uh, pull out uh, automatically every three months a new 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 certificate. So don't don't be scared if you don't understand all of that um, because actually I simplified it. And you can uh, install everything, uh, given that you have a Microsoft account, in one click. Uh, so I will show you that. And then I will come back on the details of how it's done. Uh, so the Azure button uh, that you can find uh, in BTC Pay Server Azure repo uh, is here. So basically, when you click on it, uh, it will connect to your Microsoft uh, account and uh, like ask you a small wizard to, 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 to install to your, your, your new BTC Pay instance. Um, so here we go. Uh, there, is, there is not lots of things to, to, to set up actually. There, there is a, so, some kind of name that you, you, you want here. Uh, I will take out uh, some BTC Pay. Uh, I wish to why because I created a uh, some BTC Pay earlier, so I, I don't want uh, any any conflict. And uh, what is important is also so th this will create you. It will create a VM uh, in Microsoft Azure, uh, in Microsoft Azure data center. And you will be able to connect through SSH directly to it. Uh, I, I will tell you why you you might need it later. But basically, you just need to pick up a password here. So I will. Um, I don't know. Okay. Uh, this notification email is for Let's Encrypt that will notify you if they don't manage to if the certificate comes to expiration and you don't have a new one. Uh, well, the other thing interesting is the network uh, that you are using. So you have right now you have mainnet, testnet, greg test. Uh, soon I will add support to Litecoin, Litecoin, testnet, Litecoin, greg test. Uh, so right now let's just put greg test so, so, so we can test basically without having to think. Uh, if you put if you put like mainnet of testnets, uh, basically you will have a pop up like that uh, that show up and which say when you start BTC Pay that uh, in order to use BTC Pay you need to wait that Bitcoin Core finishes work. Uh, in my case, it took 
three days, around three days to, to sync from the beginning. Uh, so here we go. Uh, I, I, I will move forward because like uh, it takes around 20 minutes. Uh, the reason it takes so long is that not only the Ubuntu uh, serv uh, Ubuntu server is like provisioned, uh, but also once provisions, then all the Docker image are pulled on the server and the Docker Compose is starting. So it takes, it takes a while. Uh, second reason is that it's Microsoft. And third reason is, uh, well, that's basically it. So basically if uh, you have time, so go on Twitter, go go trolling on Twitter, go on CoinMarketCap, uh, look at the price. I don't know what's, how much is it today. Uh, I think we didn't, yeah, we didn't pass 20,000. So yeah, uh, and let's meet again later in 10 minutes. Okay, so we are back. Uh, so when, when, when it finished, basically you have this sort of notification here. Um, what is important to know is that from now you are kind of billed uh, from Microsoft. So I, I don't receive any payment for that. Uh, you're paying directly to Microsoft Azure uh, for the computing resources you're using and the storage resource. So I, I think back of the envelope calculation is around like 40, 70 dollars because the blockchain is kind of big. Uh, there is very interesting pull request, uh, I mean, yeah, pull request that has been merged from Jonas Schnelli, uh, which will decrease a lot uh, storage consumption and it might drop the price of BTC, uh, one BTC based server from, uh, I think, around $20 per month, which is quite substantial. Uh, so back to where we were. Uh, so once it's done, you have deployment Microsoft template. So I know it's not very helpful, but like you need to click here, Microsoft template. Okay. You click on Microsoft template, uh, this blade open, and you have like your server URL here. So by taking that here and opening, you can see that you can connect uh, to your BTC pay instance. Connect. So it's a it's a test certificate. The reason is a cer test ver certificate is because your the default uh, DNS name is, is Azure.com, and let's encrypt allow only five certificate per domain. Uh, no, no, uh, twenty certificate per domain uh, every week. Uh, so it means that for that I'm using instead uh, the staging certificate of Let's Encrypt. Uh, you can see it here. It's it comes from let's uh, let's encrypt, but it's not trusted. Uh, anyway, uh, so right now you have a full BTC Pay running, so you can create invoice, you can create merchant store, everything. It's operational, one hundred percent operational. Uh, but one thing you need to do though is uh, you don't want in production you don't want a fake HTTPS one and you don't want this weird looking uh, domain name uh, so if you want to fix that uh, then you have two things to do first thing is to add a c name record inside your name server that points to this domain name so basically imagine that your domain is mydomain.com you have to add uh, record to mydomain.com, cname record to my, uh, from mydomain.com to this uh, here, to this domain here, okay? Uh, once you have done that, uh, you need to connect through SSH to your new server. So um, I don't know, I don't know what, uh, what, you, what, what is your, operating system. Uh, if you're using Windows, you have two ways. You can use Putty or you can use also uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, so I, I, will, I will just use that. So bash up, I mean Ubuntu and I will connect to my server. So it's uh, 
SSH, my username that is here and uh, this guy here. Tac. Okay, yes, uh, I want to connect my password. So, okay, uh, right now I'm connected to the server. So first thing you need to do, uh, I know, I know for, for some of Linux guys it seems obvious, but for Windows guys it's not. You're not root here, so you don't have lots of permissions on your server. So to get permission of your server, you have to type sudo dash y dash i. Uh, so here I'm root and I can start doing whatever I want. So uh, if I want to change to mydomain.com, basically, I, I, I don't have mydomain.com, obviously. So I would just show you how you need to do. You have to enter chain domain dot sh my domain dot com so you have to do that after adding the record you know in your inside your name server uh, and then when you do that basically it will it will connect to uh it will change the settings of your nginx uh and it will also reconfigure let's encrypt to use a real certificate instead of a test one so once you have done that uh you wait like maybe one minute okay you copy paste your domain you put it here and bam you're connected There's nothing to do uh that's about it uh, about about job shooting um so you're inside a normal ubuntu vm like i said it's a docker composed behind it so it means that you can do a docker ps you see all stuff that is running and if you want to grab some logs uh, you have to look the documentation of docker so you can just copy paste for example this guy here docker logs this container and you can see some 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 logs okay so it's very handy for debugging um sometime it might happen uh, it happened to me like twice where the server got broke for some weird reason uh, so in this case just either reboots if the reboot don't do it um what you can do uh is um so it is to restart docker compose for restarting docker compose you can just do print end and you see that you have path here to your docker compose so if you want to restart you do uh, docker uh, dash f you pa you passed this guy down uh no sorry it's docker compose so if i do that it will basically shut down all my server like you can see this guy don't work anymore and if you want to put it up again you that up dash d dash d because you don't want to hang up okay so everything is restarting slowly normally if i refresh okay back up uh yeah yeah so Sometimes you might see that happening because like BTC Pay and Big Explorer is restarting, so you just have to to wait a little bit and okay, this message will go up. Uh, that's basically all I wanted to show you on this. Now, uh, I just want to talk about more about this Docker Compose uh, because it's not really complicated under the hood. Lots of people don't like Azure, okay? And I know, uh, but the thing is that there is no, no Azure almost do nothing on that. So the main part is done by this Docker Compose inside the PTC Space Server Docker. Um, you, you have basically this Docker Compose here, blah, blah, blah. There is lots of stuff inside it, but don't fear. Uh, what you have to know is, uh, so they several here, they several, uh, volumes. So when you put down your service, this data is never uh, removed. Okay. So don't worry. 
So basically you will have like the Bitcoin data deer, uh, NGX configuration, Postgre, BTCP and, and, and Bixplorer data deer that are never uh, removed. Um, other thing, so when, when, so like you see, when I did Docker up to start again my service, I didn't, uh, I didn't configure anything. So why does it work? Uh, the, the reason I didn't have to pass any parameters is because if the host has all this environment variable configured, so you, you can take a look at them. It's not very complicated and it's well documented. Uh, it will basically use that to configure your Docker compose. Okay. Um, so when uh, the, um, if you want to, 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 to run on your own Ubuntu server, you just have to, uh, to configure this environment variable, run the Docker compose and that's it. Um, so the, the cool thing that is happening on uh, Azure basically is, uh, so when, when, when the Ubuntu server is provisionized, there is only one script that is running that configure my doc, uh, my, uh, my Azure VM. And as you can see, it's not very complicated. I can show you now. Um, it's this entry point that SH. So basically the entry point that SH take two, uh, three parameters. First one is the Azure DNS name. Okay. Uh, it's paced by the templating engine of Azure. Uh, the second parameters is the network, mainnet, testnet, or rec tests. Third parameter is your let's encrypt email. Okay. From this information only, I can uh, derive all the relevant, all the documented uh, environment variable that I show you later uh, before. And uh, so as you can see, I, I put that into inside the ETC environment. I put that into the, your profile. Uh, I don't know what's the best way, you know, I'm a kind of Linux uh, noob. Uh, so I do it all and somehow it works. Um, so what, what I do, I, I install Git, curl, uh, I install Docker and I install Docker Compose. It's basically all I do. I clone uh, BTC pay server and I start my Docker uh, Compose here. Uh, then I use start, I think, uh, upstart uh, to here. So I, I use upstart. So if the server reboots, then the Docker Compose uh, restart at the, at the boot. And of course, the change domain uh, that I make available to you. Um, so ch the change domain script is not complicated at all. Uh, so it just takes your new host as first parameters. It resets all the exact same environment variables. So maybe there is a nicer way to do it like that, but I'm not a, ch a bash genius. So uh, if you, if you can improve that, I will be happy to accept pull request. And then I just start again the Docker Compose. That's it. There is nothing more to do. Uh, everything is handled automatically by, uh, Docker Compose. So it means that you can easily host that by yourself. You don't need, uh, you, 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 you can, you can use Azure if you're lazy, but you don't have to. Uh, so thanks for listening and see you next time for another podcast.